So Annie left a comment on one of my previous videos asking that I do a tutorial on a certain type of button interaction where the button morphs into a circle and then a circular loading indicator appears and then it morphs back into a rectangle and a check mark appears. So a pretty detailed button interaction, but pretty easy to set up in the behavior designer. I take you through all the details and I include my entire process here, drawing the button, even making some mistakes along the way. So I think it's a pretty good, uh, realistic tutorial. If you have a suggestion like Annie did, leave it in the comments because I'm looking for ideas to make tutorials about and I'm making new tutorials every weekday. So subscribe if you want to catch all of them. Okay, step one is to draw a button. So I'm gonna to go to the insert menu, choose rectangle and drag out a rectangle shape that'll be the button background. And then I'm gonna give this like a bright red color and I'll set the radius to 10 so that it has nice rounded corners. Then I'll go to the insert menu, choose text and put in a label for the button. Now I wanna make this text layer be center aligned so that if I make any changes, it all happens from the center. I'm gonna select the button and the label and click the vertical align, or sorry, the align horizontally button, and then the align vertically button to get everything right into the middle of the screen. Now I'm just gonna adjust this button a little bit and I'm holding option while I resize and that makes it resize from the center so it's really easy to explore different button shapes and sizes here. Next I need a, oh, you know what? I ended at a half pixel there. I'd like to keep everything at full pixels for X and Y, that looks good. I'm gonna remove those. Now what I need is a little check mark. So I'm gonna go insert, choose vector, and I'm gonna hold shift and then click one point here. And holding shift is going to allow me to do a straight line. I'll click another point there and another one there to make a little check mark shape. I'll hit escape a couple times to get out of vector editing mode, turn off the fill, turn on the border, and I'm gonna set the border width to four. Then I'll change the color to white. And I'm gonna drag this right onto the button. This is where it's going to appear at the end. I'm gonna resize this down. Again, I'm holding option while I resize this. So it resizes from the center. And that looks like a good size. All right, now the next thing I need is a circle. Cause this, this button background is gonna turn into a circle, but then I'm gonna need another circle on top of it that's going to fill in as like a progress meter. So we'll go insert oval and then hold shift as I drag out an oval. And I'm gonna place that right over the middle as well. It doesn't need to be exactly the same size because I can have the uh, button scale down as it animates into a circle. Okay, so I'll go with that. It's 43 by 43. I'm gonna wanna remember that. Now this, I'm gonna turn off the fill, turn on the border, again, use four, and I wanna make that white as well. And then I'm going to adjust the start percent here so that the border disappears. And I'm gonna have that animate back in later. And then this check mark, I'm gonna fade that out. So now we're back to just looking like a button, which is what we want. I'm gonna select all the layers, including those invisible layers. Actually, I should give some of these names. Okay, I'll select all those things and then click behavior in the toolbar because I'm gonna create a behavior to do all this animation. So we start out here in the initial state, then I'll make a new state. The first thing that's gonna happen is the text label is gonna fade out. The button background is going to at the same time resize to 44 by 44, I think it was. I can check by clicking on the circle here. It was 43 by 43. So I'll just resize this. And now I'm going to make the radius bigger so that it turns into a circle. You can see if I have a very low radius, it's a square. And if I increase it enough, it'll look like a circle. And that's what I want. And so not only is it gonna turn into a circle, but it's also going to, the fill is going to turn white and the border is going to turn light gray. And the border should be four. Okay, what's gonna happen next is the circle that we have hidden there, it's going to appear by having its um, border percent animate back to zero. Now, that looks like the wrong color, it's white. I actually wanted that to be red, so I'm gonna exit out of the behavior designer because I don't want it to animate to red, I want it to always be red. And so I forgot to change this color. So I'll click that, get the eyedropper tool and choose this same red color. Okay, I'll select the group with the behavior on it and go back into the behavior designer. 
And you can see now already in this new state one, it's red. Now it's animating really fast. So these other animations, you know, that looks okay, but the circle animating around that that's too fast because I want it to be like a loader, which takes some time. So I'm going to come here, change to classic easing and I'll make the duration somewhere around 800 milliseconds. Okay. That looks better. Just want to make sure that this is aligned perfectly with the other circle. So I'm matching the X and Y values. Okay. So I've got those three states and what happens next after it finishes, it's going to animate back to the original button shape. This circle on the outside can fade out and the button background. It's now this circle with the gray border. I want it to go back to how it looked before. One, instead of resizing it and trying to match it exactly, I can reset the layer by right clicking here and choosing reset layer. So now it goes back to how it looked originally. Now in this state, also I want the check mark to appear. So I'll just fade that in. Then I'll make, actually, I don't think I need another state. I can just link directly from here back to the initial state. And I can test that animation here. All right, now that check mark is animating too slowly. And that's because it's using the animation I set for this loading, loading border on that small circle. So I'll just choose one of the other layers that has um, this spring easing and copy the string representation of the easing here. So I'm copying that. And then I'll check, I'll select the check mark and paste that in. You can see it's using this 800 millisecond classic easing. It's too slow. So I'm going to paste in that same spring easing. And when I tab out of there, it sets that to be the same one. Now, when I go from this state to the initial state, it looks a bit better. So I just exited out of the transition designer and I'm going to move the circle layer down below the check mark and explode because I think it's interfering a little bit. You can kind of see a slight visual artifact. And now you don't see that. Okay. So now I have all the states, but I don't have any way to get between them. I'm going to set it up where clicking on the button in the first state, I'll create a link and it will take me to this first new state. And from there, the rest of it's going to be automatic. So I want a timer link going from here to the next state. And I can right click drag from one state to the other to quickly create a timer link. I'm going to set the timeout to zero milliseconds so that it'll immediately progress to the next state. And then from here, another timer link will immediately zero milliseconds, take me to this state. And from this one, it'll go back to the initial state. Actually, I won't use a timer link for that one. I'll just make it so I can tap back to the initial state when I'm ready. I'm going to name this behavior button, exit out of the behavior designer, and let's open up the preview. Okay. I'll tap the button. There's the loading check mark. I can tap, goes back to the initial state. Cool. That's a fun interaction. Thanks to Annie for suggesting that I create this type of button interaction. If you've got a suggestion, leave it in the comments.